What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Collective Comics and the Lights Comics Action Podcast. We are coming back at you today with episode number 42. We're we're in person finally. <laughs> it's a Again. little bit different. It's kind of a it's kind of a last minute decision to do it this way, so it's a little wa- wanky, wonky, yeah. wonky, wanky. A little bit different, but yeah. I kind of like it. I yeah, kind of like it. Uh, yeah, it's easy setup. This is easy setup. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> way way easy. You know, either even I think when we do it over Riverside and we we have a guest, it's still pretty easy. Oh yeah, but, Riverside is easy. Yeah, but getting the time zones figured right, out when yeah. we have like. Somebody in New York, somebody in L.A., and then yeah. we're sitting here in Chicago. We're all three in different time zones. Right. It makes it one hell of a game yeah. <laughs> to play. I'm just saying for an in-person setup, this one was easy. Yeah, this, this, is, this, this is, is my nice. Riverside setup. We just back up a little bit, and here we are. There we go. There we go. <laughs> we're in the Jungle J studio. Ju- yeah. Studio Jungle J. Yeah, it's it's a studio for sure. Yeah, dude, this is dope. This is the first time that I've actually seen the whole setup in person. Since oh, yeah, because this is different. I used to have yep. the DJ stuff back here and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, it's a little different. I like it. There was a point in time where you had two desks in here and a little corner desk, and this yeah. was like my desk. Right, yeah, we had like a little hub of operations in here. Yeah. This little room is transformed many times yes yes Um, but we're getting closer and closer on the basement you know i remember when we started the basement i was like month we will be done in a month (laughs) yeah right (laughs) it's been the whole year now so but we're making we're making progress life's been crazy yes chaotic same here it's been wild but we're getting there we're getting there one little step at a time you got the new job going on I was to Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> man. We've been yeah. everywhere. Going to Oklahoma. <laughs> everywhere. It's, it's been wild. But yeah, we're we're in person finally. Again. We went to see a movie last night. Yes. We did. I was so stoked yeah. to go and see this movie. And guess what happened? <laughs> I was so stoked on this movie. And guess I what know. happened? I fell asleep. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it's not a collective comics movie review unless Javier is falling asleep in the movie. Yeah, I'm I'm super super upset. <laughs> you know, are we are we diving in right away, or we should probably throw the spoiler alert up? Yeah, I was gonna say if we're jumping in, we gotta say spoilers right now. Yeah, but even even just going to see the movie that was the first time because Flash we didn't see together. No, we didn't see Flash together. We've been on Riverside this whole time. So mm-hmm. last night was like the first time that we've even been in the same room yeah. together. I think Flash, you had COVID. Yeah, you had COVID. And then so I went to go see it myself so we could talk about it after I got not COVID. After I was done having COVID. <laughs> after you were clean. <laughs> yeah. After I was sober, I uh, went to yeah. see. Co- I went to see COVID. I went to go see Flash. Oh yeah. man, which which was a. Uh, I don't know. I thought Keaton was cool, but <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen how we feel about Flash yet, there's a there's a whole Flash review podcast. Go check that out. Um, We're diving into the CGI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I was I was somewhere the other day and I saw like this thing full of dolls and I was like, hey, this is early actor. It's from the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But yeah. this is this is the the models they this is the yeah it wasn't cgi it was literally yeah, it was just <laughs> dolls on fishing line it probably would have worked looked better <laughs> honestly probably. Uh, i don't know it probably would have looked the same i, don't I know think we better. found out that they ended up having like some kind of nope split second we do have to cut this yeah. scene and, and make this very very quickly because i think it was going to be a volcano scene or something and yeah. uh yeah it was the last minute cho- change but Still wild. Nine years yeah. and still last minute changes. Right. Uh, Probably the longest movie to be filmed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There was a movie that took like 15 years, but they did that on purpose. Right. Because they literally like w- had the actor as a child and, and made him go through life. Oh. And he just, as he physically changed, they filmed the movie. Right. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But I wonder if, yeah, I don't know. I I know like the first season of Arcane took like seven years, but that was also uh, it's a show and that was like their first season and yeah. you know so I don't know and it's way more than an hour and a half worth of content <laughs> right yeah <laughs> you know N- nine years is a long time but we're not talking about Flash today 
Nope. We could talk about Flash for another three hours, probably. But we're talking about something that took a lot faster. Yeah, I was thinking about it. We're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Mutant Mayhem. Went to see it last night. Spoilers. We're getting into it. I was thinking about it last night because it almost seems like it almost seems like I didn't know anything about this. And then all of a sudden it was like um, Seth Rogen or the TMNT Mutant Mayhem Instagram or whatever was like, hey, this is happening. Here it is. Couple months. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, it was very, very fast. I definitely found out about it on Instagram. So right. social media marketing is just proving to still crush the game. Yeah, and I think they standpoints. did it in such a good way where, like, I think we've talked about this before. It's almost like we know about Marvel and DC movies for so long. And then by the time they come out, it's like, all right, here, we're going to see another one, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, with this one, it was the dog's down here just off camera. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just playing with your knee. Yeah. <laughs> For the audio listeners, right. it, it probably looks kind of funny. So hop over to YouTube and <laughs> clip it. Um, yeah, so I think we've talked about this for, like, DC and Marvel. What are you doing, guy? <laughs> this is onyx this is onyx this is the yeah. dog <laughs> um not the dog that they used in the flash um <laughs> but uh <laughs> looks much better <laughs> we've talked about this before where like you know about dc and marvel stuff for so long that it's almost like not exciting when it comes out and mm-hmm. then this one was like hey in a couple months this movie's happening you don't know about it here it is boom 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 there's a bunch of names and actors and all kinds of stuff and you're gonna see it in august yeah and i think it was like april or may yeah. Or something like that. Like it was a matter of months that like announcement found out the cast and that like Post Malone was in it. Yeah. And stuff I mean, like that. Ice Cube. We'll talk about like I mean Seth Rogan, obviously. Seth Rogan is the man behind this whole project. Yeah. But yeah, Ice Cube, Post Malone. We got um Maya Rudolph. We got mm-hmm. Paul Rudd. Um, the girl from What We Do in the Shadows, which is like a huge show right now. Um the girl from The Bear was April O'Neil. The Bear is a huge show right yeah. now on Hulu. I know a bunch of people just watched a new season, me included, and that played with everybody's heartstrings like crazy. Uh, just the names in this movie were crazy. They were huge. Yeah. Very big John names. Cena. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, so it was it was wild, you know? Yeah. I, that's That was probably w- one of my favorite things. So even, even if I wasn't a fan of the Ninja Turtles, just... Mm-hmm. Seth Rogen making a movie and an animated film, I would have probably went to go yeah. and see it, especially with Ice Cube right. being like the main protagonist. I was like, let's do it. You're you're I, being wild. Onyx is all <laughs> over me. <laughs> Come, on. Come on, it's all right. Lay down or something. Just <laughs> lay down. Calm down. I love puppies. <laughs> I love puppies. Unfortunately, about a year ago, I. I lost my dog so i I very much love your dogs <laughs> and your cats <laughs> right this is the joys of recording in person at at my house you know when we were downstairs we just closed the door and uh <laughs> you know but now it, he'll just bark at the door and wait to come in so right. if you guys want to see more of the animals just you know drop that comment right and, yeah and share <laughs> i got i got a couple of tiktoks and stuff i don't post tiktoks very often but sometimes it's of the dog or the cats or who knows but people like the animals man <laughs> yeah. i don't know what it is people Col- love animals collective pets collective pets <laughs> all super pets <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um we get into those uh what were those those dogs you remember those like eye dogs or something like uh, that neopets what no, are you there, about? there were those, but then there was, uh, I think it was like Digitech, but I remember a dog with a big head. It always had his head sideways, and it was like a little robot dog, and everybody went crazy for him in like 2004. Really? Yeah. I don't remember. I remember like Target used to have the dog, and uh, didn't like Radio Shack or something have a dog? It was like... Taco Bell has the dog. Oh, Taco Bell does have a dog. <laughs> He's like, oh, Taco Bell did have the dog. <laughs> we need to get some Taco Bell. Um, uh, why doesn't Taco Bell have the dog anymore? You know what? does have pets. There's animals in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. They're turtles. There's a f- super fly. What do you think of super fly? <laughs> I thought that they specifically made him around Ice Cube. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, they were like, we want Ice Cube to be the villain. 
let's make that villain. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if uh, Superfly has been in the cartoon from the 80s. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much he's been around. You know, you always kind of get the uh, Rocksteady and... Uh, Bebop. Bebop and Rocksteady. Mm-hmm. You always get I thought them. we're going to get a Krang for sure. Yeah, I mean, I was wondering, I was going into this wondering if we were going to get Shredder. Mm-hmm. Because we really didn't hear anything about Shredder, but then we got him in the mid credit scene. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. So, so I'm excited. It looks like there is going to be another one. Mm-hmm. Um, they I, didn't like officially say that, but yeah. they hinted it hard. Right, yeah. At the end of this movie, which which got me very excited. I was like, okay, maybe we're going to get this whole Seth Rogen universe of yeah, Ninja and, Turtles. And I think it's interesting, too, because I can't think of a time where like all of like... Bebop and Rocksteady and everybody were on like the side of the turtles. Yeah. You know, so um going into that, it's gonna be an interesting it's gonna be interesting to see how the second one plays out and Shredder and uh the foot, I believe. I always mm-hmm. get confused with the foot clan. The foot and the hand for from... Dare, Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> um Marvel, not Marvel. Over yeah. <laughs> over I guess let's go back to like just the style overall. What do you think of the style, the sketch oh, style? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it, especially because there was definitely like certain points where I can hardcore tell like the core of the turtle was like modeled mm-hmm. and like three D sculpted. I don't I don't know the proper yeah. term, but a lot more video game esque mm-hmm. and and the outline of them was, was like spider verse, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was hand drawn on a two, 2d piece of paper and it's floating above there. Cause they can't make it really curve. Right, yeah, and yeah. as the core moved, the outline kind of moved away mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That was, that was, those were the little like details that I noticed. And then there was that kind of in the intro scene when the moon was real ginormous yeah. and they're, they're floating over the moon and you see all these little squiggly lines and they're all individually moving on top of that and then they had the core of the moon that was floating and i thought that was really cool uh, my wife was just in colorado and so they had the tv on just whenever they were in the in the room or whatever and she said she had saw something i think it was a seth rogan and they really wanted to like go into like what it would be like if a teenager sketched this like in a notebook in school yeah and like just like the effects around like the lights and around the ooze like the lighting effects and everything with the 2d scribbles and stuff was so cool yeah um it was sloppy right it was it was slop it was neat too though it's almost i think i told olivia it was like this is almost like really high quality lo-fi yeah you know what i mean it's like it's like low quality intentionally, but like on high quality resolution. Like you get really high quality, but that intentional scribble and that intentional yeah. like kind of like putting chaos. a film right, o- yeah. over you know something or like a filter mm-hmm. effect to give you that ambience and stuff like that. The whole tone right. of the movie I loved, especially the city at night. Um, there was one question that I did want to ask you, and I kind of asked you last night was how you felt about splinter oh yeah 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 because you had said something i like splinter i I, i'm gonna be go out there i did not like splinter it wasn't the splinter i was expecting right i I love old wise splinter i have also one of the old not old it's probably one of the more recent um animated tmnt series from nickelodeon right uh, might have been. Um, I watched it on like Hulu or Netflix or something. Yeah, but, I think uh, that's that's Nickelodeon that like, made it, but they made this one too. But ish. the splinter, the splinter, and that's just like old fat dad, like really sitting on his recliner, gets mad at the turtles for interrupting his TV time. Like, it's pretty funny. Wow. Um, we'll see if that's going. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. it's still going. Uh. So reach out and move that every once in a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I think this was, I think this was a nice like midpoint between like clowning on Splinter and making him like a joke and making him like the hard edge, like, you know, mm-hmm. scolding them, like, like kind of like the old 80s style Splinter. That's the Splinter that I love. Right. You know, I didn't even really know that there was... Because I never watched that. Yeah. Even when I was a kid, I would watch it sometimes, but I don't really remember Splinter. I really remember the old old movies right. that are live action, 
you know, with the suits and uh, the other ones that came out, what was that, 2005, 2007-ish, the mm-hmm. li- ish live action where they were CG and it had uh, Megan Fox's April O'Neil. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, though I I loved I loved Splinter in those. Right. You know, as well, you know, so I was kind of expecting that Splinter going into this and then when I was like, yeah, it's not Splinter. I think I think the one thing that they did really well in this is like splitting that like kids vibe with the grown-up vibe. Mm-hmm. And I think Splinter was a really good portrayal of that cuz like he's soft enough for like kids to really enjoy him. But, like, as an adult, you can really see, like, how much he cared for them. And, like, he was just looking out for them. And then, like, his love interest at the end of the movie was pretty funny. And I don't think it was, like, done in, like, a cheesy way. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually done in a funny way. And just having Jackie Chan behind Splinter was so awesome to me. You know, having him watching, like, the old Kung Fu movies. Yeah. I was, like, trying to see if, like, it was old Jackie Chan movies that Splinter was watching as Jackie Chan is voicing splinter that's funny you know but um, i didn't even look for that yeah i think it was like old bruce lee and stuff i don't know if they snuck a jackie chan movie in there or not but they probably did um why not yeah why not yeah you know, thought, why wouldn't I you put that easter sure, egg in like there. it'd be old like jackie chan movies yeah um but also just like having him come come from like that martial arts stunt background and having that in the movie um there was just like elements of it that i really enjoyed and then at the end of the day like he is a backseat character so he's not like a main character in this one Mm -hmm. so it really didn't affect me too much that he wasn't like that old grizzled like kung fu veteran you know what i mean yeah that was the one thing that kind of saved him is that he wasn't throughout the entire he was throughout the entire movie but it was just like for a minute or two here and there yeah you know it definitely wasn't like a core you know splinter's hurt splinter let's save splinter you know and stuff like that you know and I think um, I think it's really cool, too, because the way they portrayed him as, you know, finding the old movies and having to train himself. And, you know, if if he is a mouse or a rat in the sewers that came across these turtles, he's not going to be like this really good martial artist. He would yeah. have to train himself somehow and be unsure of his skills and things like that. So I think but what i was saying before like that divide between like adults being able to enjoy it and kids being able to enjoy it i think splinter was a good version of that i also think superfly was a good version of that you know the mm-hmm. the ice cube lyric references that he would do like <laughs> the missy elliott re- <laughs> the missy elliott reference the, the, uh, <laughs> like us we know that but yeah. as a kid it's just like oh this cartoon saying something cool you mm-hmm. know what i mean yeah i think the the thing is that they know that the parents that grew up with right. the Ninja Turtles is are going to go and see that. And they know, oh, this is the late 80s, early mm-hmm. 90s. Who was popular back then? Yeah. Ice Cube, right. you know? Yeah. So then he's sitting there throwing all these rapper ref- references right, yeah. left and right. And I'm just like, that is awesome. Yeah, my son would never understand that. Right. I think I mean, I th- maybe I <laughs> love it when they do because, I, I mean, it is a cartoon. You know what I mean? It is. It is kind of. Tz- targeted a little bit more towards the young audience but i think they put those easter eggs in there Mm -hmm. in a in a really good way to be like for grown-ups us and people older than us and younger than us whatever to be like oh yeah like i get it i got it yeah you know what i mean yeah and and i think that comes from seth rogan being behind it they couldn't have had a better director oh yeah and like point of view you know, for the Ninja Turtles. He probably grew up reading the Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah, you know, for sure. And that goes back to the the whole, they wanted it to look like it was a college kid in, the, mm-hmm. in a dorm, sketchy kind of look. That's what Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman did, yeah. was in their dorm eating pizza, drawing the Ninja Turtles just that way. Uh, you know? I, did, I did notice, I was scrolling through just to see some of the other voice actors, and Kevin Eastman d- did have a cameo as a voice in the movie. I saw something so, in the credits, and yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, what? I was like, oh, that's cool. You yeah. Know? But it also, like, Kevin Eastman always seems down for stuff like this. He's a goat, dude. I mean, it's not like it's not like Seth Rogen was doing him bad. You know what I mean? And oh, no way. He was out there doing his thing. And, I mean, this is this is just a movie that I just really enjoy. I feel like out of all of the movies that we've seen through this collective comics, likes comics action journey, like 
this is definitely going to be the one that I see multiple times. Mm -hmm. This is going to be like a background noise movie for sure. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. It's just like so cool. It's probably going to be one of those where like I turn it on for background noise and then I just end up watching it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause like, I mean like black Adam and quantum mania and stuff like that. Like I like the movies and I I've really been thinking about watching them again, but I really feel like I need to sit down and watch them. You know what I yeah. mean? Like to, to just follow the whole movie and all the action. And it really seems like something I need to sit down and watch to just kind of take the whole thing in. Whereas this is like, I feel like this movie is so good in so many different, like so many different settings. You know what I mean? Yes. You can throw it on while you're falling asleep, throw it on in the background. You can sit down and watch it. You know, it's, and the turtles are just really nostalgic, you know, and it's not something that's shoved down our throats like Marvel and DC. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's, it's gladly taken yeah down our throats right. you know what i'm yeah. saying like yeah you 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 take it any day yeah you know i'll i'll i'm looking for more ninja turtles to shove down my throat you know like i'm constantly looking at that and i think the one thing that might have had my opinion on splinter and it still is the way that it is was that i'm i'm very fresh off of reading the last ronin for mm -hmm. the first time yeah you know, and he's very wise. They literally throw it back to the old school black and white way that they drew it, right. you know, and and gave you more origin, gave you more on Splinter and stuff. Of, and they praised him for being so wise. And, yeah, he was strict, but it was all for a reason, you mm -hmm. know, and it and it whether it showed it now or later, they they noticed, you know, and Ronan, I don't want to spoil it. Spoil yeah. that one for anybody. <laughs> the last Ronan really noticed and, and really um appreciated that and is kind of seeking vengeance for the death of his family and and that's that's the splinter that like is is fresh in my head right you yeah. know so i think that's what i was like which overall i feel like mickey mouse <laughs> <laughs> you know or chuck e cheese that's what i felt like honestly and i was like oh no because uh last ronin is also very dark compared to most turtles i think you know what i yeah. mean so definitely it's for, coming, it's for us definitely older fans. definitely coming off of that is definitely an interesting take and mm -hmm. then going into something like this would be kind of like a almost like a not a culture shock but like definitely like a shock of some kind you know what i mean going from that dark side of turtles to like this cartoony scribbly you know kid friendly yeah. thing is definitely a change um i feel like the one thing i didn't like and it's not like I didn't like it. I feel like it's the only thing that I can find that like I really didn't like about this movie is it's definitely not like a timeless movie. There's definitely a lot of references to like pop culture right now. Mm -hmm. Whereas, With like, TikTok and everything, right. yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's definitely not something that like 10, 15 years from now, it might not ring true. But I mean, you also go back to old 80s movies and they're definitely referencing stuff that's like... Oh, I remember this, but it's yeah. also like, this has been a long time, you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Whereas, like, I do think, um, like, the animation style and stuff will probably hold a lot better than those, um, the live action foam costumes that they use in, like, the 80s, you know? So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, outside of Splinter for you, is there anything else that you saw that you weren't, like, a big fan of? There was one other thing. But you guys got to hit the subscribe button to, to find out. <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting it. Right. Uh, it's out now. I've not I've not been subscribed to our channel until just now. You know what? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm like, oh. I go to look after him like, oh, I wasn't subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> what well, we got it? the two channels now. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, but it was so. so there's uh, an excuse there. <laughs> make, make sure you're following Lights Comics Action YouTube channel because all these yes. podcasts are going to be coming out over there. Yeah, we're trying to move the whole podcast and the hour-long episodes over to the Lights Comics Action podcast. Right. Specific YouTube channel. And if you're watching on the Collective Comics channel, the link's in the description for that. Just click it. Go over there. Give it a follow. Check it out over there. Indeed it is. So what didn't you like? Now that I've subscribed... <laughs> I, I think it took way too long to get uh superfly oh uh, okay and to get into the mm -hmm. whole thing that was happening yeah you know um and i fell asleep 
And is that on me? I don't know. You <laughs> gave me the same origin story that I already know, yeah. <laughs> you know? So for for too long. That and that's that's my only like little cripe yeah. with it. Is was it good? Yes. But did I need the same origin story? Could you have gotten through that a lot quicker? Yes. You know, right. I think um in those live action ones, the first one, they said that they told the same origin story, but they did it within five minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, and and in five minutes, you got the whole origin story of the Ninja Turtles up until that point. I will say, because, I mean, I've been a huge stickler on that with all the DC and Marvel stuff. Yeah, And that's kind of my thing, is that, like, if we're going to do it for the other ones, it's kind of like, well, we, every single movie, I feel like we get the origin story. I think, I think the one thing that makes this different than those is this was targeted towards a younger audience and we haven't really gotten say what you will about the ones with Megan Fox's April O'Neil. A lot of people are really mad about that origin story. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, we really haven't gotten this origin story since the eighties. You know what I mean? In a movie. Yeah. Um, so if you're targeting, if you're targeting, watching a lot yeah, of, the, right. of the old stuff. So if you're targeting a younger audience now in 2023, as opposed to like us who saw it in the eighties and nineties, we've seen that. And the one, the other thing that I think makes it different is like with like Spider-Man, for example, we've seen the Spider-Man origin with Toby. We've seen the Spider-Man origin with, um, Andrew and we've seen the, an origin with, um, Tom, right? Tom. Yeah. Tom Holland. So, since 2001 we've seen that origin three times yeah so now going forward like we probably don't need another spider-man origin for another 20 years you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but other than that i do agree that it could have been shorter i was thinking that i did like how they did it a little bit just because it was like all right we're progressing we're progressing we're progressing and then we get a little flashback of this is how I met you. This is how your turtles. This is the who is this is blah blah blah. Okay, going back into the story, and I think this was a different time too because like they were real. They were learning karate. Like they were learning martial arts. They were meeting April. They were, you know, we haven't even gotten a Casey. You know, if we get a second one, maybe we'll get a Casey in mm-hmm. the second one. Um, so I think, I think it is. I think we could have seen Superfly a lot sooner. But I also feel like where would the movie have gone if we saw Superfly earlier? I mean, we I think there was Superfly like trickled in because we saw him at the beginning with the the scientist that got grabbed. Mm-hmm. We saw him grab the the armored truck or the ice cream truck or whatever. We just didn't see him. We didn't know it was Superfly. And then Superfly steps out of the car and you hear Ice Cube's voice. You're like, oh, dang. You know what I mean? The reveal yeah. was there. Um but I mean, granted, it was only an hour and a half movie, so it, it I think it moved pretty well. Yeah, I I think so. I just think that the second half is where everything really oh, yeah, was like sure. action packed and nonstop, and it was awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course, right before that is where I kind of fell asleep. <laughs> so there's a little bit of glue that's missing there right, that yeah. I'm like, if they would have just gotten into it, I would have. I know I would have been awake, you know. Right. Um. But yeah. Uh. Overall, what do you think of the movie? It, uh, off of what i saw <laughs> you know i would i would honestly say a nine out of ten and i think that's probably the the highest score that i've given a movie yeah because i've always like i gotta knock it for something right. you know but these are little cripes that i have and there's kind of an explanation for it especially because there there's a lot of ninja turtle stuff but there really isn't right in comparison to the massive amount of dc stuff that we have and the massive amount of marvel content yeah and shows and stuff like that that we have now and i think i think the big difference between a lot of the a lot of the ninja turtle stuff and like the marvel and dc stuff is it's almost like like the the ninja turtle stuff is a lot of like shows that are like the old like 90s shows Mm -hmm. where it's like it's just like this ongoing like episodes of like you see the turtles they get themselves into trouble they get themselves out of trouble the end of the episode you know, it's like that ongoing, like almost very sitcom-y, pumped out, like, like corporation yeah. pumped out. Whereas, like yeah. now with all these other shows, it's like always working towards a bigger story, always mm-hmm. working towards the MCU, always working towards some kind of DC story. Um, and it's always a lot more 
I feel like Turtles is always targeted more towards kids. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's not as dark. It's not as like I don't know. It, it, I like Dark Turtles though. Yeah, it, it's it's not as it's not as interesting to. You know, a lot of people who look at an... It's the same way people look at comics. You know, people look at an animated show and they're like, that's for kids. That's a throwaway for a lot of people. Comic books are for kids. Comic books are... You know, you're not actually reading if you're reading comic books. All this stuff. Oh, my and, gosh. You know, the stuff, the same stuff that we saw in the, the Stanley documentary. Of, yeah. It's been going on for forever. Um, and I think with this, and I think with Spider-Verse, you know, I think that's going to... You know, our generation is watching a lot of anime and things as well. So I think that's really turning a page as far as like this this isn't just for kids. It is lighthearted and yeah. you know, things like that, but um overall it's not just like a kid's show. It's not just a kid's movie. It's not and I think the the comic books are doing the same thing. Yeah. With the the trades and the paper or the hard covers and you know, all that stuff is like showing people like this is this is actual material you know yeah. and and you can kind of watch that if you go throughout history and they showed that a little bit in in the that documentary that you were saying is that the, even with the turtles they're kind of growing with us mm -hmm. so they're they're making a story deep enough for us to understand but they're also making it lighthearted and you know enough for a kid to just grab their interest every yeah. every seven seconds you know type of thing i think turtles are interesting too because like Granted, it's called like TMNT. It's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but there's so many times that I like completely forget they're teenagers. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, this is just like dudes having fun, yeah, like going out and you know what's the? I, I feel because like... we never mentally grew up. <laughs> you know, we're just like these are the bros. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's like kind of the same thing with like Spider Man. I forget that Spider Man is usually just like a high school kid. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and that that's the. The thing to where with, with some of them, I feel, you know, Tom Holland is a better Peter, but like Andrew Garfield was kind of a better Spider-Man and Toby kind of, I felt like surrounded that, you know, but he, he was also grown up a little too quick. Yeah. I think, he was like fresh out of high school right away. I think, um, I think for me, it was always hard to believe that Toby was in high school. You know what I mean? Like he mm -hmm. just looked like an adult. Yeah, you know I mean? and Flash. Oh, Flash yeah. was just jacked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you're like, this kid is not in high school, right. bro. Um, this dude's 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, like, even with, like, the 80s movies, like, April was, like, working at... Wasn't she working at, like, a broadcast center, like, a news or a... Yeah, or, and, like, she was an editor for a newspaper or something? Yeah, that's the thing is that... Um, I think they made her a lot younger, mm -hmm. more closer to the turtles age than anything else. I yeah. feel like she's always been, you know, if the, if the turtles are 16, 17 years old, mm -hmm. 15 years old, then she's 25. Right. You know, working for NBC, you know, or whatever. I kind of. TMNTC. <laughs> yeah. I kind of liked her being like the same age as the turtles. It almost added uh -huh. that extra. I don't know, like the dynamic the bond. Yeah. It yeah. Was like they had something in common, something to bond over. Yeah. Mm. I, I kind of liked it a little bit better. Mm. And it wasn't so like um, the classic, like, oh, I have like almost like I have a crush on the teacher type of thing. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they were always hitting on her. Right. Back in, you know, even in the comics and the, in the TV show. Um, but it was always kind of like it's never going to happen. It's still right. never going to happen. But now it's like this dude actually has a crush and wants to feel human. Right. A little bit, you and know, with... high school together. And yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like maybe that's why it's always felt like that because like, especially in like, um, live action stuff, I kind of just base the age off of April. Cause I, I, in my head is just assume they're the same age. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I see a 25 year old April, I'm thinking the turtles are 25 too because of the dynamic between them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, making making April closer to that teenage 15, 16, 17, I think that I think it just worked better in my head. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. like oh, I felt yeah. like there was always a range. You know, I always felt like maybe the turtles were born a year 
a couple years apart from each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Raph's the oldest. Right. You know, but he's always too angry. Right. You know, where Mikey's the youngest and just cares about skateboarding and yeah, pizza. Yeah, just having fun. Yeah, and he yeah. just doesn't care. He's, Kawabanga! You know, yeah. I love it, dude. <laughs> he didn't... Did he... I, I don't think he said it, it <laughs> once this whole movie. <laughs> you just oh. said it. You just said it. I was like, did he just did he even say it in the movie? I don't think he did, Got bro. Longer, dude. Mikey was still my favorite. Mikey, yeah. Mikey's always my favorite. I love Mikey. I have a special bond with Mikey because I feel like he's an extension of me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was watching something earlier. Like, I'm just not a good dude at like picking favorites. Like, we've seen it on the channel a million mm. times. It's just like, I just like everything so yeah. second is raf i love raf yeah i don't i don't really have a favorite ninja turtle I, mm -hmm. I feel like if i was going to pick one it'd probably be either mikey or raf but like but also like the other two are super cool too you know what yeah. i mean like there's so many cool things i was actually variant just put out a video comparing the turtles to like people in the bat family and uh leonardo <laughs> was nightwing and raf was red hood and so on and so forth makes so, sense yeah i was like that makes sense and then i was like wait i actually do like leonardo i was like i like them all i can't <laughs> yeah you're like wait just, i like all nothing. these guys there's nothing i can do yeah um, and you're like that's why i like him he's nightwing yeah. in turtle form <laughs> but then like you know raf is also like the red hood i'm like yeah i also like that i mean they they're so different you know there's mm -hmm. they're they're turtles they're all ninja turtles but they're so different in their personalities and i i'm drawn to all of them for different reasons so like it's really hard to be like mm -hmm. this one is better than that one it's like i mean without all of them I and mean, we see it a million times in like cartoons and shows and movies it's like when they're not together they fall apart and they're not yeah. as strong but when they come together at the end it's always way cooler and you know without all four of them, it's, it's just not as good. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Dude, so, I'm sorry. I'm laughing. <laughs> I think your dog farted. <laughs> Did he? I think so. Oh, I don't smell anything. I, I started smelling Maybe some. it's you. <laughs> it probably could be. Dude. Maybe I did fart. We are in a small room. So. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. I'm like, <laughs> I think the dog farted. You're like, actually, my butt feels leaky. <laughs> yeah, right? I, actually, you know what? I think it was me. <laughs> This is really high quality podcasting. Oh, right, man. But <laughs> that's what we do here. Yeah. You know? But while you were explaining that, I actually had two things that I kind of remembered that I did have a little bit more cripes about. Raph wasn't angry enough more of the time. Yeah. He had his little anger fits, mm -hmm. but he wasn't as alpha yeah. as he should have been. But I still liked him. Mm -hmm. He it was there. But they're also I feel like this is the youngest rendition of the Ninja Turtles. I feel like pretty close. You know, because I've always felt like I definitely never felt like they were fifteen. I felt like they were sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You yeah, know, you closer never, to the that's what we were saying. 20s. You never really know. How yeah, they, are. they just called teenagers. So. Where's Kevin Eastman? Let's get Kevin Eastman on the podcast. Right, yeah. And dude, how old are the Ninja Turtles? When did it start? And how old are they now? You know, yeah, like how old is Mikey? It's kind of like a Simpsons thing, though. Too, you know what I mean? So like, it's like, it's like, how long has Bart been the age that Bart is? You know, or oh, Lisa gosh. or Homer. Thirty years. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind <laughs> of the been same thing. Ten years old for thirty years. They're called teenagers, and this is what happens. But it's not real. Like it is just what it is. They yeah. are. You know, what was the other thing, Raph? And what was the other thing? Um, now I'm kind of losing it and forgetting it, but there was, there was one other, it was a small, yeah. small thing. It wasn't anything massive. I was kind of like, uh, I don't know. It, I for, I'm forgetting. Yeah. I'm losing my train of thought a little bit, but no, it, it, I thought it was a really, really good movie. Awesome. Awesome take on the Ninja Turtles. But, uh, I, I do feel my nine out of 10, I feel like it has to come down one. Right. I feel like it has to go to eight. I'm like, you want to know why? Why? Mikey didn't say cowabunga. <laughs> if we both noticed that, and and he, yeah, and we but, just now noticed. But we it didn't was, notice it in the movie. That's true. You know, the movie was but, good enough for us not to even realize it. Yeah, but I feel like if there was a good point to throw the cowabunga at the end, yeah, we all everybody would have went whoa. <laughs> you know because yeah. then we would have realized he said it you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he didn't say know. it the whole movie what maybe i maybe i wasn't paying attention maybe you were asleep so <laughs> i know dude i'm gonna i'm gonna cry but like dude <laughs> 
I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry if I missed it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Maybe that was the scream that I heard. It was everybody yeah. screaming and woke me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It was uh yeah, it was just it just happened while you were asleep. Uh, maybe it did. I'm like trying to I'm trying to think of a reason not to give it a 10. That I was looking for it too, but I feel like uh, I, mean, I, I don't, it's not like I don't want to give it a 10. It's just like I feel like 10 is really high. So like, do I want to give it a 10? Just give it the 10, bro. I, One of us I, has to I give it like a 10. I feel like it's a 10 for me. And I'm like, too stuck in Ronin right now to, to give yeah, it a 10. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue with the story. We got the, the, I think they did the shredder reveal at the end perfectly. Mm. I think the characters and the uh the voice char- the voices were so good i feel like there were certain elements that i was like that doesn't really seem like this voice fits that model but it was so like small that i was like whatever i think it's just because some of the voices were so like like you you see seth rogan when you hear seth rogan. yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> but even like like paul rudd you have to like think for a second like oh that is paul rudd you know what i mean you almost get there lost was a couple in the them. character post malone's character i didn't even know who it he th- was it, it threw me for a loop because i i was excited that he was yeah. in it but i kind of forgot going into the movie that post malone mm-hmm. is playing somebody in this movie right. and then i saw austin post yeah at, in the credits at the end and i was like oh yeah, yeah. i forgot right. like yeah. i was like who was he <laughs> right so I mean, I like the story. You had the comment about being a little bit slow to the villain. I don't disagree with you, but it wasn't like to the point where like it affected the movie in a big way to me. Mm. Uh, it has the excuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's a ten for me. This is, this is out of all the movies that we've seen. This is definitely one like I'm going to watch again. Like the other ones, like. Yeah, I want to watch them again, but this is one I'm definitely going to watch probably two, three, four times. Yeah. I I love the style. It is exactly what I wanted it to be. It's exactly what we saw in the trailer. I did like the trailer. I I wanted to say this uh, too because like the trailer didn't give anything away. You know what I mean? You kind of you kind of got the idea of the movie from the trailer, which I think a trailer should do, but mm. there's so many of those trailers you go see and you're like Everything I needed was in the trailer. I didn't need to see this movie. Yeah. You know what I you mean? You kind of know the storyline before you go into it to where this was like, I still ain't know nothing. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> yeah. in this movie. Will we see Shredder? Who is who is Post Malone going to be? You yeah. know what I mean? What who what What is Superfly? That was my kind of question, but I don't know because yeah. I'm, I'm kind of late really getting into the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I liked the Ninja Turtles when I was a little bit younger, but I was never like so obsessed with them. Yeah. But since Ronan now i'm obsessed i you know i was always like a cartoon dude and there's in cartoons there's always like these one-off characters or like you know what i mean mm-hmm. so krang you, yeah you always kind of get a different thing i was never like a big tmnt comics dude growing up but um yeah it's a 10 i don't i don't have a reason not to give it ten. a 10 so 10 you know if i wanted to do anything it'd be like a 9.9 but you know yeah, I mean? is this just, the first 10 out of 10 i think for me this, it is this is the first 10 out of 10 coming off the, the first like what one out of 10 <laughs> right you know so yeah i know we've been scoring so low recently it feels good to be able to give something a, a I, really high score like that. i was also just so excited about this going into mm-hmm. it you know what i mean so like for the fact that i was like this excited and really nothing nothing major was like oh you know what i mean yeah that there's nothing that i can complain about really right you know there's like the little things that we talked about but in the grand scheme of things i don't think those were like big changes for me you know what i mean yeah no i definitely uh it wasn't nothing that ruined yeah ruined anything Uh, it was just like oh they kind of changed the origin here they changed this here you know whatever yeah i wonder how many people are going to be really mad about there was no like car accident but at the end of the day the the ooze still fell down into the sewer you Mm -hmm. know what i mean it wasn't they weren't made in a lab or yeah i wanted to know (laughs) why the turtles were there yeah you know that was the only thing because i think that was one thing that i think that was might have been what i was going to say is that we don't know why the turtles were in the sewer it didn't say that the truck came around the corner, spilling the ooze, knocking the fishbowl down, and the turtles fell into the sewer with the oh, ooze. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know there was ever a fishbowl involved. Yeah, so that's the original. I thought story. the turtles were always just in the sewer for some reason. No, 
Uh, no, I, they I were... knew about the ooze in the truck and the car accident uh-huh. and the kid, and that's why we think Daredevil is from this, and you know, so on and so forth. But I didn't. This know. kid had the three turtles in gotcha. a bowl, or four turtles <laughs> in the bowl. <laughs> the the fourth one was just in there. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. But in in a fish bowl, taking mm-hmm. it home from a fair mm-hmm. or something like that, truck turned the corner too sharp, almost hit the kid, made the kid drop the turtles it crashed right over the sewer gate yeah they fell down with the ooze yeah i guess i just always assumed the turtles were just in the sewer because i i was thinking about that to myself last night too i was like why are the turtles just always in the sewer like they're just always there like i feel like turtles aren't just like a common thing always in the Mm. sewer but that makes more sense now i remember what i was gonna say the one one of the things that i really really liked is that we've never gotten the explanation uh, like an official explanation on why Splinter is so much older than the turtles. If, oh, yeah. if the ooze fell on them at the same time, wouldn't they grow the same? Yeah, yeah. You know, but he literally said it. He was like, well, the ooze affected me different because I was an older rat and you were baby turtles. Yeah. Dummy. <laughs> <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> it was just kind of like a, it was just kind of like a dig. Yeah. It, it was, was like it was Seth like... Rogen being like, nobody's ever explained this. So I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was funny too. Cause I just watched uh, Mario the night before. So I got <laughs> Seth, Seth Rogen, Donkey Kong and then Seth Rogen. Oh D-Pop my God. Yeah. Donkey Kong. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He was awesome. It we was... never got to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, we didn't. You can't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's probably going to end up being for a different day. Yeah. But, all right wow first 10 out of 10 on the channel 10 out of 10 i gave it an 8 but that was only because i feel like i had to <laughs> if i'm gonna if i'm gonna complain about longer origin stories or getting in the movie too long yeah. for other movies i kind of feel you know, if i'm gonna knock other movies i feel like i have to knock it a little bit yeah but it's it's I, accepted because it is for a new generation yeah, of turtle I mean, fans to me it just didn't feel like it to me mm-hmm. it, to me like that was me looking for something right, to, yeah. to really like. I this is like, the little bit that I have to nitpick. You I feel know? like other movies, like for the Flash, exa- for example, I was like, I was like looking at my phone, like, is this almost over yet? Like, yeah, waiting for it to be over. This one, I was like, I felt like I was in it the whole time. You know, yeah. what I mean? it almost didn't even. I it, it, this one could have been an hour longer, and I would have been fine right. with it. You know, saying that, but I don't yeah, think I, that would. I got been. up from my seat, looked at my phone, and was like. It's nine forty or something yeah. like that. I was like, "Are you serious right. right now?" Like it just it went really quick. I mean, yeah. I fell asleep, but I don't feel feel like I fell asleep for that long. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't miss so. that much. You know, uh, but enough to go and see it again today. <laughs> I mean, it was only like twelve yeah. bucks. I might go see it tomorrow with uh, some of our nephews. So go do it, man. I'm, I definitely I need to take my son. My son's just been a little sick lately, so I'm trying to get him better, and then I'll take him. Yeah, but I know Nicole wants to go see the Barbie movie too. Are you freaking? Are you freaking out? Is there like a fly in here or something? I don't know. The dog's <laughs> the freaking, dog's out. freaking <laughs> out. The dog's going crazy. All right. I'm waiting to see like a little mouse. Right. Just yeah. like <laughs> and getting a it. little turtle. All right. Splinter! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think oh, that's boy. uh I think that's the episode for today. Anything else you want to add? You know, just check out the whatnot stream. Come check out the whatnot stream. We got a bunch of new ninja funk foils and bolo's pra- playground and uh lots of heat going right now yeah. whatnot whatnot has been popping and if you haven't been coming and getting your deals and steals you're missing out there uh there's a link in the description to get ten dollars if you're not signed up use our link to sign up to get ten dollars on whatnot use it anywhere on whatnot use code collective comics at checkout on w.gg get your generous energy 10 percent off and until next time this has been collective comics <laughs>